How do you learn languages when you're not in the country where the language is spoken or the languages are spoken? I think that's the situation for many of us. To speak well, usually we need to speak a lot. That's been my experience in most cases. However, I'm going to introduce you to someone today who speaks a wide variety of languages remarkably well, and she's learned them all at home. Ijlal from Turkey. I think you'll find this very interesting. Hi, today I have a special guest. It's Ijlal from Turkey, mm -hmm. who is a wonderful polyglot, a young polyglot. Hi, Ijlal. Hi. So, uh, why not, first of all, if you enjoy my videos, please uh, subscribe, click on the bell for notifications. If you follow me on a uh, uh, podcast service, please leave a comment. So, I, I'm really happy to have Ijlal here for a number of reasons. First of all, because she is a wonderful polyglot, we had a conversation on her channel in different languages. Uh, because she's from Istanbul, I don't know actually if she's from Istanbul, yeah, she's from Istanbul. Turkish, she will tell us. She's from Istanbul. Yeah. And, uh, and then I want to talk a little, because I haven't talked to that many polyglots from Turkey. Maybe there are a lot, I just haven't met them. And so I'm gonna, we're going to have a bit of a conversation about the role of geography in language learning. But first, I would like to ask Ijlal to sort of introduce herself, explain her interest in different languages, why she learned them in different languages. Can you do that for us, Ijlal? I guess. <laughs> Don't can Give it a try. So, uh, je voudrais commencer tout d'abord avec euh, le français, vu que c'était euh, la première langue étrangère que j'avais appris par moi-même à l'âge de 11 ans. Donc, euh, j'apprends le français depuis environ 7 ans, parce que maintenant j'ai 18 ans. Et euh, en fait, euh, c'est ma langue préférée, je dirais, euh, parce que euh, j'aime la culture, j'aime le pays, j'aime les francophones, en, en tout cas. Oui, euh, et après, euh, le français a vraiment facilité l'apprentissage des autres langues d'un certain pour moi. Donc, euh, oui, euh, en fait, euh, toutes ces raisons font le français ma langue préférée en général. Et dopo, euh, ho cominciato a imparare italiano nel 2020, quando non avevo Un'altra cosa più importante da fare, e pensavo che imparare italiano poteva anche essere interessante perché vivevo la mia vita soltanto in francese e mi interessava soltanto il francese, però dopo ho deciso di cambiare questo e ho passato italiano. Ho fatto un esame di B2 in italiano e infatti la cosa che mi interessa di più è la musica e posso anche dire che la letteratura italiana è abbastanza affascinante per me. E dopo l'italiano, dopo alcuni mesi, credo, ho iniziato a apprendere spagnolo e già che potevo parlare in francese e italiano. Spagnolo, non ho avuto difficoltà a scuola in spagnolo, però ora il idioma non mi interessa moltissimo come gli altri. Uh, però penso che um, è un buon idioma e soprattutto un buon paese. Uh, Tutti i paesi sono sapere in spagnolo. Y quería tanto visitar esos países, pero no he tenido uh, la oportunidad, podemos decir. Y dann habe ich angefangen, Deutsch und Russisch zu lernen, auch en 2020. Ich dachte, dass diese Sprachen sind auch voll interessant, um zu lernen. Und ich wollte seit immer diese zwei Sprachen lernen, Deutsch und Russisch. Aber ich habe diese Sprache... Aber ich habe gedacht, dass Deutsch und Russisch war auch ein bisschen schwierig, weil die andere Sprache immer ähnlich sind, Französisch, Italienisch und Spanisch am Ende. Aber dann äh, habe ich Russisch und Deutsch gelernt und diese Sprache finde ich besonders ähm, interessant, ja. Aber äh, ich denke, dass äh, Russisch etwas der Nobel ist, nicht mehr mit meinem Samus oder wie mit Jesuke. No, I'm just saying that again. Okay. No, no, it's very good. I don't know. No, I think that the Russian language is a new language. One of my most loved languages. I think that when a person who has a favorite language, there are some loved languages. These languages are very important because we are talking about many languages. И мы можем выбирать какие-то языки среди всех этих языков. Думаю, что это очень важно. Э, да. А русском языке, я думаю, что 
мне интересуется культура, мне интересуется, как добрые все э, люди, которые говорят на русском языке, как э, родной. Да, думаю, что культура очень интересна, страна очень интересна, а все очень интересно касается русским. Да. И в Нихайе она такая, мы там были вот на арабии, но я не знаю, что Yeah, that was okay. okay. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, you know, I uh, I'm very impressed with your ability to speak these languages, uh, your pronunciation, your grammar. So uh, before we get into this theme of geography, I, I wanted to ask you, for example, I noticed that your cases in Russian were very good. How did you go about learning? And, and of course, in German too, as you said, both those languages have somewhat complicated grammar. How did you go about learning the uh, grammar in those languages? So I think I have a this okay. So I think I have a different perspective of grammar because some people are really ignoring when it comes to grammar. They say that it's not useless. No. <laughs> They say that it's not useful at all, but actually I have another opinion. I find grammar pretty useful and grammar actually helped me a lot while I was learning those uh, Italian and Spanish, but sometimes I realize that I pay way too much attention to grammar. For example, in Russian, that's what I did. I learned only grammar and nothing else. Actually, right now my grammar is nearly perfect, but um, doing that actually wasn't really a good choice. I maybe... I had to listen to more Russian, I had to speak more, but yeah, I know that my grammar is okay because um, there was a time where I studied only grammar and nothing else, but I think that grammar is mm -hmm. like, you should pay attention to grammar, but only at a necessary amount. And if you just exaggerate the attention that you uh, give to grammar, then everything becomes complicated as what I experienced with Russian. I just... I just hated the language because of the grammar. But for example, with German, I just learned the grammar regularly without paying too much attention to it, but at the same time without ignoring the grammar. So I think that you should somehow just keep the balance between grammar and other skills. And that's how I just mm -hmm. managed speaking in a true way, let's say. Now, the, I I thought about this today, you know, this, this question of geography. Yeah. So... Uh, apparently, in Ethiopia, people are uh, multilingual because there are so many different languages in Ethiopia. Or if you live in Luxembourg, you are surrounded by many different languages. Uh, if you live in the United States, uh, or even in most of Canada, you've got no one to speak to in any other language other than English. Uh, for example, the Spaniards are not as good as the Portuguese. The Portuguese are a smaller country. Uh, you know, Russia is a large country. I don't know how good they are at speaking languages, or Japan, where I lived for many years. Uh, I don't think the language skills are that great. I don't know what the situation is in Turkey, but to what extent do you think that your location, physical location, in today's day and age with the internet and so forth, how much does that affect your language learning possibilities? Yeah, good question, I think. So... Actually, I live in Turkey, and Turkey is a really multicultural country, and it's becoming this every other day. Like, we have a lot of tourists, and we have a lot of people who start living in Turkey. And because of all these reasons, like, it's really easy to find an international uh, uh, environment here in Turkey. Just If I just visited mm -hmm. the European coast, I would just... Find a lot of tourists to talk to, especially Russians, people who come from Arabic countries, Spanish people. Yeah, I think right now we have a lot of possibilities. But uh, what I'd like to mention is that I have a lot of polyglot friends, which are <laughs> particularly from Europe. They live in European countries and uh, they're also polyglots like me, but I have a really different thing that actually makes me... Um, kind of different than them because people are just like I was born in that country and my mother was actually bilingual and then I studied in that country then we moved to that country so I learned that language too and 
I was in Spain and all holidays. I went to Italy. I went to France, but I actually have been abroad only once. And that was a country that I didn't speak the language. So I think... Nobody trusts that? The Netherlands. Okay. Right now I'm learning the language, but when I was there back then, I didn't speak the language. So I have never been to France. I have never been to Russia. I don't know where, when I'm going to actually visit these countries. That's another question. So I think that uh, that's the main thing that differentiates me from other polyglots. And maybe that's the thing that makes me inspirational because... People say that, okay, maybe it's possible to learn all these languages when you stay in your own country and don't visit just overseas. But I think that if I was born in a European country, maybe I would have more opportunities to learn all these languages and maybe that would be easier for me. But also in Turkey, I think that, yeah, as long as you have internet connection, I think you can learn everything. The country doesn't play a big role here. But the importance of Turkey in my language learning is that, is that we have a lot of tourists, I think. Like, I can just easily find native oh, yeah. speakers or I just meet mm-hmm. other polygons who come to visit Turkey because we have a lot of touristical destinations and people just want to um, witness all this history. So do you spend a lot of time speaking with these people? Yeah, actually, when whenever I just uh, visit the European coast because it's kind of a more touristical place than the place where I live right now. I live in Asia. Mm-hmm. So... There are a lot of trees and they are most likely eager to help you and actually... When you say European coast, what are you referring to? That You don't mean like Izmir or Antalya? No, no, no. Actually, I don't mean that. Istanbul has uh, two continents. Oh, the European side of Istanbul. I I get that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Istanbul has two sides and the European one is kind of the place the tourists... More international. Yeah. So whenever I talk to tourists, they're just really kind. They're eager to help me, especially Russians, I think. They're just like, when they see that you speak Russian, they are surprised and they just want to talk to you. They ask you a plenty of a lot of questions. I think that Turks and Russians just share this thing. When we see a foreigner who speaks our language, we're just amazed by that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that's really incredible. And well, I, I can tell you, I can tell you that the, uh, the, we have a lot of Iranians here in Vancouver, yeah. and if I speak to them in Persian, they're just they're just so happy. It's a, they're the most positive I have ever come across. Yes, you also have a lot of Iranian here, but I don't speak their language. Right. Yeah. So, in other words, what you're saying is that geography, so it helps in a way because you have a lot of foreigners, visitors there. Uh, if you lived in Ankara, then presumably it would be more difficult. Now, how much do you talk on the internet? So, actually, I have... Or is it mostly people you meet in person? No, actually, I use internet more because uh, I can um, just find more people on internet and I have more options to talk to because when you say someone just... When you prefer meeting someone to have a language exchange with them, that can be sometimes real difficult because of the scheduling, because of planning, I don't know. It's not really possible to do that regularly and yeah but on the internet actually we can talk to everyone uh in each part of the world so i prefer talking to people on internet how do you do that Uh, is this language exchange or who do you find to talk to so sometimes i talk to my followers because sometimes i say hello i'm from russia and i'm learning turkish so if you like uh i could help you in russian and you can just help me with turkish so i just accept that and we become friends Actually, some of my friends are just, some of my friendships are just like created like that from my followers because Mm -hmm. we just have a language exchange with them. Or on the other side, I can also name some uh, language learning applications like Tandem, I think, HelloTalk. Also on these kind of things, we can find other people to talk to. And there is a website that I find really useful, which is Conversation Exchange. I I have found many friends on this website. So... Conversation exchange, yeah. okay. Internet actually offers us everything needed. And I think that everyone who wants to learn languages must actually use that. But how do you get yourself to a level where you can actually have a meaningful exchange? Say you start in a language from scratch. Now, how are you going to get to where you can actually have an exchange with someone? 
So actually, I don't really prefer uh, talking to natives at the very beginning because you don't have something to say. You just say, hello, how are you? My name is, I speak those languages, and you have the same conversation with everyone else. And at this point, actually, you think that you are having a proper conversation with someone, but actually what you're doing is just repeating yourself. And you're, le- you're not learning something new, you're just learning the greetings, but right. you have already learned them before. So what I think is that we should start speaking to native speakers when we are at A2 or B1 level. For example, I have met a Russian friend last year and at the beginning we couldn't really have a conversation with him because my Russian was really poor. But after he said that, just tell me everything you can. Just form a sentence using the words you know. And after a month, I actually was at the level of having a proper conversation with him. And that's amazing, I think. (laughs) So we should just... Okay. Wait until A2 or B1, and then we should do our best. So while you're waiting, what do you do then in, if with these languages? Say you're waiting, you're not yet, you're waiting. To, how do you get yourself to the A2, B1 level? So actually, I'm just grabbing the basics, because if you don't have the basics in that language, it's, it's actually kind of difficult to speak. For example, imagine that you're speaking Italian, and if you don't know past tense, if you don't know future tense, if you don't know the personal pronouns, actually, it's impossible to speak to someone. So once you get the basics from... A material from a particular thing, uh, you say, that, okay, I have completed A1, I have completed A2, and then right now I can start talking to native speakers. So at that level, when I feel that I can construct a few, um, a f- that feel was driven, <laughs> a few phrases in languages, so then I start to learn for native speakers and I talk to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think your example is uh, is very encouraging. Uh, for someone who is uh, not in the country where the language is spoken, and yet you've achieved a very high level in in those languages, and uh, I think that's a good example for for people who are interested in language. I hope uh, people, yeah. So and and uh, especially if at such an, a young age to speak so many languages so fluently, I'm most impressed. So thank you very much You're for taking the time to visit with me today. It was a pleasure. And uh, I will leave a link to your uh, YouTube channel and to our in the description box. And uh, they can watch us uh, speak in different languages. Yes. Uh, I know that you have also used Link, and I don't know if you still are using Link, but uh, uh, I think that's one of the tools that you find useful. Yes. But, of course, it's only one among many tools. And I think people have to go and find, whether it be the conversation exchange or find their own method and their own way to, you know, ways of learning languages that they find enjoyable, which obviously you do. And if you do that, you will continue to improve. Absolutely. So thank you. You're welcome. And one day I'll learn enough Turkish so we can have a conversation in Turkey. Hopefully.